Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes I, can I can hear you. you. Okay, so how are you? I'm I fine. Know. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so basically today I will try to discuss about that flood susceptibility mapping, okay. how we can easily okay. use using Google Earth Engine platform and find out the flood hazard risks area. This is the high risk, low risk, small risk, medium. So these type of things, how we can easily do using Google Earth Engine platform very quickly and also very efficiently we can do. Uh, so let's go about that. So just I simply share my screen and try to show you that things. So can you see my screen? Is it yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so first of all, okay, so first of all, I try to discuss about the some theory part about that and then try to discuss about this code. Okay, so just I simply s open my slide. Okay. So basically flood susceptibility uh it depends different types of flood factor one kind of factor it's called the topographic witness index okay so it's the one factor for flood also elevation so it's a major factor for the flood land use land cover classification it's the another factor for flood also you can see the slope Okay, slope is another uh, factor for flood. Also, precipitation. Okay, it also major factor for the flood. Also, you can take the drainage density. It also major factor for that flood. Mm, also, we can see the. You can see about that. Okay, just I simply open my. This paper it also better just to see. open this. Just to simply open these things in the doc file, okay. So basically, here I already write this type of flood subsidiary factor TWI, then elevation, then land use land cover, then slope, precipitation, drainage density, NDVI, distance from river, distance from road, and then soil type. So basically, it is the major factor for flood. And now, how it will be contribute to the flood? So basically, a uh, topographic index here you can see TWI. So mainly, TWI it's a topographic index, and this topographic index is also known as the compound topographic index. Mainly, it's the commonly used to quantify topographic control on hydrological process. Okay. Uh, basically, it's a quantify the topographic control on hydrological process and when you get the low value, suppose you can get the low value, suppose minus 22, minus 14, it's very low value, then you can see the low, uh, uh, very low, low, moderate, high, very high. In this time, we just make the some class, suppose uh, minus 20 to minus 14, it's very low, minus 13 to minus 6, uh, 6.4, it's very low low then minus 6.3 to 0 0.3 it is the moderate 0 0.3 to 3.6 it's the high 3.7 to 14 it's very high okay so basically uh, when i can get the very low value it's indicating the okay this uh, this yes. kind of classification where we get yes. this kind of uh, 20 yeah uh, in this 14, time uh, we have to generate we have to generate this TWI for our study area. Then we can make the class total five class we generate. Okay, we, we will download. We yes. will download this guy. This uh, TWI. Yeah. Right. We have to generate. So basically, okay. uh, we can easily generate okay. using the Google Earth Engine platform and also make the class. Mm. And suppose when I can get this type of low value, it's indicating the very low susceptibility. Okay. Th then low, okay. moderate, high. And some elevation. Okay. Elevation mainly higher I can get the low elevation. Suppose zero meter elevation. It's a very high susceptibility for flood. Okay. Then when when I can get the high elevation, you can see it's very low. Okay. So in this time, this elevation we also make the total five class. 
and when I can get the low elevation, it's identify the very high susceptibility for flood. And when I can get the high elevation, it's identify the very low susceptibility of flood. And also for land use land yeah. cover, you can see land use land cover, mainly water body. Water body is the high susceptibility of flood. Suppose river, then suppose canal or any lake where uh, is available for water. Okay, so this water body is high susceptibility for the flood. Then barren land high, agriculture moderate, settlement low, and vegetation very low. Also, you can see the slope. You can see when I can get the very low slope, suppose less than 0 0.93, it's the very high susceptibility of the flood. Very low slope, very high. And when I can get the very high slope, it is a very low susceptibility. So that's why we also consider the total five class of the slope. And from here, we can easily make the uh, slope class and we can um, identify. When I can get the very low slope, it's identified very high flood susceptibility. When I can get the very high slope, it's identified about that very low susceptibility. Also do for the precipitation. Okay. Suppose I make the total five class precipitation value. And where I find out the very low precipitation, it's identified very low susceptibility. Where I can get the high precipitation value, it's identified very high susceptibility. Also drainage density, okay. Also NDVI or distance from river. Mainly distance from river. It's uh, so why, why why for, for precipitation we have not the we don't have the class. Okay, so in this time I know I will not do that because I have not complete this full project oh. yet. It's also working. Okay, so but same process. Okay. Suppose when I do for this work for your study area, we have to make the some precipitation class total five class. Suppose. A low a low precipitation identify about the very low then uh, then and high precipitation value identify about the very high uh, susceptibility of the flood and also what the drainage density ndvi or distance from river distance from road or soil type mainly distance from river when i can get the near to the river near to the river distance it identify the high flood susceptibility and far from the river distance is identify the low susceptibility of the flood so we are also create this type of distance from river, distance from, uh, okay, so in, it's one is the distance from road, distance from road and distance from river, then soil type. So we do and then make the class, okay, that was total five class we generate. And according this five class, we just make uh, this type of uh, hello, suppose we are just make this type of things, suppose class and sub celebrity class, we also make very low, low, moderate, high, very high. Okay, and then we calculated the weight. Okay, and how we can easily calculate the weight for each uh, factor. So further, we try to discuss about that. Suppose uh, in this time, which is the more influence? Suppose here I can add different types of flood uh, factor, but which factor is more influence for flood? So it's the high weight. Okay, suppose you can put here and total weight will be hundred percent. Suppose in this time here I put here the total the uh, weight the weight the weight of what the weight of what weights the weight in of this, floods yeah. or the weight of flow in this time we are applying at the GIS ASP multi criteria analysis okay so in this time this GIS yeah. ASP method we have to set the value or influence suppose TWI is the suppose uh twenty percent influence for flood we select randomly. But we can also calculate it. Suppose twenty percent influence for the TWI. Suppose elevation is that suppose uh, five percent influence. Suppose LULC for suppose ten percent influence. But we are also calculate this type of weight. Okay. So and for calculating this weight, we are using at the ASP method. You can see ASP. Okay. Analytical hierarchical process. We are applying, and then calculate the weight for each factor okay so it's another uh, uh, class i'll try to show you that how we can easily calculate the weight, weight of what okay so how we can explain it? weight weight is the mainly uh in this time yeah, no? yeah. okay 
Yeah, I will show you that just a minute. You do not understand about the ASP method, I think. So I simply show you ASP method first. Suppose ASP method. I simply search. You can see ASP method is the okay. I simply open that. So mainly ASP is the analytical hierarchy process is one of the most popular and widely employed multi-criteria method. Multi-criteria method. The, in this technique, the process of the rating. Okay, you can see process of rating alternatives or aggregating or to find the most relevant alternatives are integrated. Mainly in this time, using this process, we find out the weight. Okay. Suppose here I find out total uh, mainly all of those factor. I need the weight. So basically, suppose TWI and elevation or land use, land cover. Between these three factor, which factor is more influenced to occur the flood? What do you think about that? Elevation, land use, land cover or TWI? Suppose uh, elevation is you, you and it depend on you. Okay, suppose you can consider it from your own side. Suppose you remember that uh, for that, suppose elevation is the more influence for the flood. So you can just put here the high value, suppose 80% influence. And TWI, suppose 10%. And LULC, suppose 10%. Okay. When I consider only for the three factor. And 80% is the more influence. So that's why your result morally effective by the elevation. Okay, and it's a criteria we can, uh, we are using the GIS SP multi criteria analysis to calculate this type of weight for each factor. Okay, so before that, we have to first of all, we need to create this type of flood factor. Suppose TWI, elevation, land use, land cover, slope, also you can say other factor, mainly precipitation, drainage density, uh, NDVI, uh, distance from river, distance from road, soil type. We have to create all of factor first of all you need to create all of those factor one by one and then make the five class okay we make the total five class okay and further we are uh find out the influence mainly weight is identify about the influence what's the influence of each factor what's the value of influence of each factor we try to find out this factor using asp method so in this time, first of all, we have to know about that how we can easily create this type of factor. Uh, TWI, elevation, land use and cover, slope, also you can say other factor. All of those factors need to create. Then all of those factors we are used. You can see in this time, in this follow side, you can see. So in this time, you can see all of those factors, ASP, analytical hierarchical process, main weight. And we also set the weight. Suppose you can see. This factor they put at the 0 0.01, this factor 0 0.093. So in this time, we also calculate this type of weight after creating this type of factor. Okay. And then we are put calculate this type of weight. And further, we are just calculate this type of things. Very poor, then moderate, high, very good. This type of uh, re uh, region we can easily find out. And it's also very useful for not only for the flood mapping also suppose you want to identify agriculture production area or anything or anything about the uh, decision making process or we are using the multi criteria analysis asp gis sp is the best for that okay so in this time our first task is that we have to create the factor this type of factor twi elevation land use land cover slope also you can see the precipitation so all of those factors we have to create and then we are just uh, apply the ASP method okay so now let's check about the one project I always see done in here so here you can see it's the one kind of uh, map I already add in here so basically uh, it's our final project uh, it show the this type of things flood hazard score so basically uh, in this time it show about that process you can see uh, we already create all of those factor here all of those uh, factor for flood so flood hazard score so in this time 
uh, after uh, doing the ASP method, we can find out this type of value. So here you can see this red color identify about that uh, mainly very high risks for the flood, and this type of yellow color identify about that mainly high. Then green is the medium. Okay. Then uh, it's the low and very low. And in this region, we are just get only for that um, high medium and very high uh, re uh, re region okay basically it's the flood uh, prone area basically there are a lot of river you can easily uh, get this type of things and after all we are also calculated the area suppose how much area we can get for this flood we can easily calculate the also area suppose high how much area medium how much area low how much area you can calculate the area also about that how much area for that low uh, how much area for that your very low how much area for that uh, medium we can easily calculate this type of things and download the csv file also from here mm, suppose download it and open so now you can see it show about that this type of value we can get the high this type of area medium this type of area low and very low we can get this type of area so basically this is the process in this time we have to learn about that how we can easily create this type of uh, layer first of all here you can see i just show you the all of this layer one by one Okay, so first of all, here you can see it show the one layer about the water. Okay, you can see in this time, this layer show about the water. Water for my so study you area. Select how, how, first of all, how you select the, I mean, the area for studying. Okay, for doing these things, first of all, you have to import your study area. Suppose here you can see, so basically here I already import my boundary shape file. So this is my boundary shape file. Here I already imported. Okay. In the total, all of the 64 district. Okay, so this is my study area. From here, uh, how I can upload. Okay, so simply uh, click on the new option, new button, and go to the shape file. Okay, and further, you are just uh, select your yeah, study. I mean, to, to, to begin, to begin, to say, okay, the beginning is like this. Maybe, uh, you know, I uh, share with you. Uh, a shape file by in, in by your uh, email so maybe normally we can go to, with my, my example just uh, my uh, shape file that i share with you okay then it will be okay, just a minute uh, and then it will be easy for me to, to understand okay. step okay. by step okay okay so mm -hmm. first of all you have to import your shape file uh okay so i already downloaded your okay. First of, first of all, I need to have uh, uh, to to have this this uh, code uh, Google Heads, like uh, code Google Heads, and then Okay, so this is your file you send. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the file. Okay, so in this time, okay, so I already opened this. Suppose it's your study area. Okay. Okay. Suppose I just open a area. So I just rename it. Suppose I just one shape file I rename. Okay, so you can see this is your study area. Okay. And now I want to use this study area and try to apply this type of uh, things and then try to find out about that uh, flood subsidiary mapping. Okay. So first of all, I need to import this shape file in my Google Earth Engine platform. 
So I simply copy. If, if you can, if you can take the the, I mean the the shape file with uh, admin two. I don't know if we yeah, admin one or two. I don't know. Is it possible or the shape file with admin um, one or admin two? Okay, it's one. Okay, so. Let me open another shape this file. One. Because you can see it's another shape file. If you want, you can also upload this shape file, no problem. And then we can get all of yeah, those upload, artistic yeah, up, boundary. Yeah, uploads. Up, maybe may, may uh, this one, I don't know, no problem. Just to take this one. Okay. okay. So in this time, we take this yeah. one. Okay. So in this time, here you can see you can put this type of name. Okay. So basically, we need that uh, four uh, file SSP. We need the SSX. We need the PRJ. But you mix all of the shape palette together and DBF. Yeah, so admin one, you can see we need only for the four files. So in this time, I just simply uh, cut and then uh, paste, create a new folder. In this folder, I just simply um, put this for a file. Suppose RY, I just paste here. Okay, so that I can easily find out. And in this time, you are also put the very long name. Yeah, so in this time, I simply short name about this file. Suppose I rename it as a short name, such as uh, suppose uh, I put this name is the boundary, or you can put anything. Suppose I put this name is the boundary, this DBF boundary, and also put at the PRJ. So I put this boundary, then SSP also put here boundary and SSX put here boundary okay just same name all of this file okay or uh, let's say yeah. if we I don't know if I can share with you if you if you can uh, work uh, about if I can share with you uh, the <coughs> Africa boundary I don't know what is it? What's the data? Africa boundary or this one? It's, it should be bigger or small. The Africa boundary. What do you think? If we can uh, walk. Yeah, no problem. We can also Af easily uh, extract Africa the specific boundary. boundary or city. No problem from here. So basically, in this time here, you can see the shape file or attribute table. Here you can see in this attribute table. Can I share with you? Can I share with you? Can I share with you Africa boundary? Any boundary can apply, same process. You try again, no problem. Okay, so I will show you the example in this time only for the one boundary. You try to apply the same thing. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you also get the recorded video class also. Okay. You try to follow that, it's also better. Okay, so in this time I want to work with this boundary and any no. uh, specific cities or boundary I take and then further apply this uh, code. Okay. okay, so let's check. Okay, so let me check. Yeah, so this is our boundary. Okay, so this is my folder. Okay, so it's my local storage. Okay, so now I want to import these things in my Google Earth engine. So click on the asset tab and go yeah. to the new and click on the shape. I don't file. know if you, I don't know if you are, I don't know if you are, please. Are you uh, recording this meeting? Oh, because yeah, so yesterday I didn't receive uh, the file. Yeah, okay, I sent I you didn't no problem. receive the file okay, for yesterday. It's recorded, okay. no problem. I'll send you, no problem. Previous class is also available okay. for the recorded, okay. no problem. I send. Okay. Okay. So now further, I simply select SS PRJ DBF. So mainly this four file I simply select, okay, and then open it. You can see it through the boundary. Suppose, uh, or I simply put the boundary. Suppose flood, or I can easily find out this name, or you can put any name, mm -hmm. no problem, and then upload. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you can see tax table will be running. It will be start to the uploading this boundary. You can see it is starting the uploading.
Okay, to work, you can see all of those cities boundary, uh, which are included in the shape file, all of those full boundary, all of those uh, is imported in the Google Earth Engine platform now. Working. So you can simply click on the refresh after completing these things click on refresh okay and then find out the name mainly boundary flood you try to find out this name suppose here you can see the name you can see boundary flood so click on here and here you can see the full uh, shape file And here you can see the attribute table. Attribute table. And I think it's a mainly the different types of city's name or your uh, administrative boundary. Okay. So different types of area. The administrative boundary you can get from here. So now import that. So click the import. Oh. So here you can see when I click on the import, it will be imported. And it show the default name is the name suppose uh, ROI. Okay. So now I want to visualize this study area. So map dot add layer. I want to add a layer of this study area ROI. And then uh, click to the run in this team. You can see one layer will be added, but it's not a show the focus the center of this shape file. So you simply use a function map dot uh, center object. Object is mainly ROI. ROI and put here the 10 and click the run. So now it focus the center of this boundary shape file. You can see we can easily visualize. You can see it show the all of those boundary. Okay. Loaded. In this time, suppose uh, I want to work for the specific boundaries from here. Uh, suppose I want to work for this boundary. Okay. So first of all, I need to find out this boundary name. Okay. So what's the boundary name? I don't know. What's the boundary name? So for doing these things, you can easily find out this boundary name from this arc map software. Suppose this, this is your boundary. I want to work for this boundary. So you can simply click on uh, here and click on here. So now you can see here it show this boundary name is that Republic Democratic DU Congo LA. So this is the boundary name. Uh, okay, so take polygon. Or if you want, you can simply just uh, click on the lasso tool. Suppose click on here. Select by lasso. Just click. <coughs> so I want to work with this boundary. Okay. So in this time in Google Earth Engine platform. I just select only for this boundary and then work with that okay <coughs> so how i can do that so for doing these things uh, first of all i need to find out this name and i just simply open this attribute table you can see it show the name about this attribute table and here you can see the name is that this is the name about that and in this column admin fr this column this is the name about this cities okay so now i want to work with that so just i simply open in here this attribute table you can see find out the same column from the feature we can get the same column of this name so click on the feature you can see this name is that yeah so admin f so simply copy this name okay and then just Take a variable, suppose your boundary, you can put any name. I put the boundary and call this ROI. This ROI simply filter. So use the filter function. Then put the earth engine filter 
equal eq means equal what's equal what simply put your uh, column name and then put your uh, city name in this time you can see this city this is the name about the cities okay so for that you can simply copy suppose just simply copy this name or if you want you can simply suppose click on the identify and click on here so now you can simply copy from here simply copy Copy. Okay. So now for that, I just simply go to the code editor and then paste. You can see it will be copy in here. Okay. So basically, this time it's a very big name. So that's why I just simply copy the same name. Okay. So in this time, this ROI, mainly this ROI is stored in your full boundary, all of those uh, district. Okay. From here, I just simply select my specific district bound specific boundary only this boundary and store it in this variable boundary okay so now i want to add the layer about this boundary so user map dot uh, add layer about this boundary simply copy and paste here click the run so in this time you can see we are get the another layer two layer added in here so one layer is all of those district and another la layer is only for the one district boundary it show why why you cannot because uh, why you cannot uh, use uh, use all the country because uh, we can have uh, the floods in each 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 uh, each each district or uh, yeah uh, so that's why why we cannot work in all the country so that we can have the overview for all countries country Okay, so mm. in this time, if you want, you can also uh, work for the all of those full boundary, no problem. Suppose you want to work for the full boundary, okay. all of those district, no problem. Okay, so but sometime, suppose you need for that uh, only for the specific boundary, then you can filter it. Yeah, instead, 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 instead to select, yes. It, Okay, can you hear me? Mm. Cannot hear you. Okay. Hello. So, I, I, okay, your voice you. is breaking. I can hear you. Your voice is breaking ah, sometimes. Ah, okay, sorry. Maybe. Sorry. So, I mean, now you can hear me well. now you can hear me yeah i can hear you yeah yeah please continue yeah uh, okay so i mean uh, maybe we can uh, yeah, maybe the full ship file and yes no problem. You can also use the full shape file. No problem. Okay. So I know that it's not. Made. Yes. Okay. So in this time we are considered the full boundary. Okay. And then find out the flood risks for the full boundary. Okay. Okay. You can hear. Me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. you uh, I can hear you. Yes. You don't, you can. It's some networking issue, I if think. Uh, can can you can Yeah, but your voice is breaking some time. In the full boundary, and yes. then we will work with. Uh, let me, let me. Let me try to do like this. 
Okay, so can you hear me? Okay, now, now you can hear me well. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you well. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, it's better, yeah. Okay. Okay, I say like this: we can we can walk in the in the all all boundary, and then we will uh, walk in the specific boundary. Oh, no problem, no problem, no problem. But can for wait. now, yeah, yes, no. for now it's better to walk for all, and then to say this is to walk with all. And if you want to select the specific boundary, you will do like this. Okay, no problem, no problem. Suppose we are just working for the full boundary. Mm -hmm. And after doing that, we are just simply select for the specific boundary. Then we can get the result only for this specific yeah. boundary. Okay, no problem. It was okay, no problem. Specific, okay. 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 So in this time, after doing these things, I need to import some data set. Okay. I need the dem data. Okay. So I can simply search here. Suppose NASA SRTM. It's a mainly dem data I can see. So basically, it's a NASA SRTM dem data. This data set provide you the digital elevation data. Okay. We can easily get the elevation data using this dem data. So just I simply import. I need this data. So I put this name, suppose uh, SRTM. You can put any name. I put the SRTM. And I need the another data set, mainly it's the global uh, surface water. I needed the global surface water data set. So I simply search here G. S W mainly you can see global surface is water. It a satellite? Yeah, is it the name of satellites? So basically, uh, yeah. So basically, you can simply click on here. You can see basically uh, this data set contains the map of location and temporal distribution of surface water from nineteen eighty four. Is it? A, is it? A, is it? A, is it? Is it a satellite or is it a, just a data repository? it's a data repository you can see this data set provider is that okay. uh, this is the data set provider so basically it's a global surface water um, app post it's a virtual time machine that maps the location temporal distribution of the water surface we can get from past 3.8 decades and provide the statistic on that uh, change the support better informs the water management decision making okay so basically it's one kind of uh, data provider they are also provide the uh, surface water uh, for the whole world or globally we can get from here okay and in this time we are just use this data set and further we are also work and then use the different types of satellite image to making this type of data set so in this time we are just easily use this data set uh, from here you can see they are easily uh, provide the different types of information for the surface global surface water we can easily access the information and very past information you can easily access from here from 1984 we can easily get from here so i import this data set also and i put this name uh suppose i put this name is that uh gsw you can put any name i put the global surface water gsw short name i need the another mm -hmm. image uh, i need the another uh, land set image okay so what, because... about, what about uh what about srtm so basically, it's a variable name. It's a dem data set. It's a satellite uh, dem data. Okay. NASA SRTM is data set. Satellite? Yeah, satellite. Is it it satellite. It provides the elevation information. Elevation. So mainly, uh, higher elevation. the high okay. and low elevation, we also provide the global okay. um, your uh, NASA SRTM data set. Easy the elevation. Okay. We can easily get for the global data set. Okay. okay. Basically, this data set we also need for okay. making the dem data or slope map. This data we are use for that. Okay, so now you import okay. the uh, SRTM and global surface water. And uh, yeah. and the one the, the the last one the the uh, yeah the first one the first one the what uh, uh, oh, it's, I, it's your yeah. boundary it's your boundary you can see this is your shape file ah, which I imported yeah my shape file okay yeah your shape file okay okay so I import that and then uh, ry so it's it's this code at the layer. You can see it's at the layer about mm -hmm. your boundary, full boundary. And map dot center object mm -hmm. mainly it's focus the center view of your shape file. Center view of your shape file. Okay. So now I need the another data set, mainly land set. So I simply search there land set. It's a satellite imagery, land set satellite imagery. You can also get from here easily. Suppose I put the land set eight.
or if you simply click on the browse data catalog you can see browse data catalog click on here then click on the land set then we can easily get the all of those land set image collection okay so from here i want to work for suppose land set 8 so simply click the land set 8 because this type of data we need for creating the this type of factor because our main target is that we need to create this type of factor you can see uh, we need to get the TWI elevation, land use, land cover, slope. And when you want to create this type of factor, I need this type of data. I need the landset image. I need the dam data. I need the global surface water data. Okay. So for that, I, I need, I import this type of data. So from here, I simply imported that uh, surface reflectance. Or uh, it's the top of it, so you can also use, no problem. And then I simply copy this image collection id and paste on my code editor and then give a variable name suppose i put this name is that suppose l8 equal to any name i put the l8 so in this time here you can see i import all of those data which i need i need the dam data i need the global service water data i need the land set image okay so now i want okay. to make the what map about the add layer the add layer it means uh, we want to add our layer yeah i want to add the layer in here yeah yeah okay and so center of Santa... this, it's a focus view view the focus on the center of this boundary ah, okay. okay okay and in this time l8 basically it's a l8 uh, this l8 is stored my full image collection of landset 8. okay, okay. this it's a unique id about the landset 8 image collection okay uh, okay so now after doing these things i want to uh, make the map suppose i want to need the uh, water suppose so water why data. this land sets land, land set because we would like to study it is uh, the kind of images that we want to work on it in this like. time we need to use the land set image for make this type of things you can see we need to calculate the okay. ndvi okay so for okay. that we are using the land set image collection mainly we need to use the band near infrared and red divided by near plus red for NDVA so, calculation. Uh, where you use the like this, it's better. It's better maybe to add a comment to say if you want to to to, to have the NDVA, please uh, okay, okay, okay. select. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this time, yeah. it's the we yeah. use for the NDVI, yeah. and also we are yeah, used for that yeah, LULC. Okay, suppose NDVI, and also need the LULC because here you can see. Uh, in this factor, we also need to calculate the LLC also. Okay, so this yeah. LLC we are also generated from uh, landset. Okay, so individual LLC and this uh, GSW mainly we can get from here the water data. Suppose surface water. Suppose in this time for your study area, I need the water. Here I can find out the water body. So in this time water data, I want to get from the GSW. Okay, so I take a variable variable and put the variable name suppose water equal i simply call this gsw because it is stored the full data set okay and then use a select function select and select a band you can see this data set uh, mainly uh, have a band mm -hmm. so i simply go to this uh, global surface water this data set again DSW. So click on here. Here you can see this data set have a band. Here you can see one band is the occurrence. Basically, the frequency with which water was present. Okay. So basically, this band, uh, it's it's the frequency with which water was present. Okay. So I simply copy the occurrence. Simply copy and then uh, paste here. Okay, occurrence. Basically, this it's a band. This band stored mm. the information which water was present. Okay, so occurrence. I put the occurrence and then it's clip with my study area. So I just simply use here the clip, clip with my shape file. My shape file is the ROI. Okay, so just use here the ROI. So now I just simply show the layer about the water layer. So use here map dot add layer 
and call the water okay and then i simply put at the visualization so just use at the mean uh, suppose zero max is that uh, 100 and where i can get the zero and 100 we can get it from our data set you can see in the band they're already sorry it's not it's a damn data it's a global surface water data you can see this data set already provide the frequency mean and max mean is the zero max is the hundred and it's the frequency with uh, which water was present for your study area so i clip with your study area use the clip function and this is the roi mainly it's roi is stored in your boundary shape file okay so put at the mean and max uh, zero and hundred and then put the plated mainly it's a color plated so i make the color plated suppose uh, i put the color this type of color suppose uh, white and uh, then suppose put at the cyan color and put at the suppose uh, blue color so now further i just click to the run in this time you can see it display the water for your study area So now let's check. Okay, in this time you can see uh, it dis visualize the water body on your uh, on your study area. It's a create the another layer. So I simply uncheck. You can see it show the water body. Okay, it's the water body for your study area, your boundary. In this boundary, we can get it's a water body. We can get the water body. We can get the water body. And water body is a more influence to the flood suppose it's a river so when it's the over uh, precipitation is the flood okay suppose this water body uh, you can see water body water body so this type of water body is the more influence to occur of the flood you can see water body you can get the water body okay so in this time we can get the water data for your study area uh, this place I can get water. This place I can get the water. Okay. Also, you can see this place we can get this river. So, this type of things is the more influence to your flood. Okay. So, you can get the water. And now, from here, we have to find out the permanent water. Okay. Suppose in this time, all time, all time we did not get this type of water. Uh, permanent. Suppose in the rainy season, water will be increased okay and dry season water will be decreased so in this time we have to find out some permanent water body for your study area so now how i can get it for the permanent water body so for doing these things i just simply uh, click on the inspector tab and click on the water body suppose i click on this water body here you can see it show the occurrence is the hundred i click on here you can see it show the occurrence is the 99 percent frequency 99 percent frequency of water suppose click on here i can get that 99 percent frequency of the water so just click on here 74 percent so click on here we can get the 99 percent so almost water is near to your 74 percent or oh, sorry 99 percent to 100 in some water we can get in here suppose click on here you can get the some water is the you can see 10 percent occurrence 10 percent we can get the some water uh, from here 73 percent so in this time for the permanent water we consider so just uh, take the variable suppose i find out the permanent water permanent water so just take a variable Suppose I put the variable name is the permanent. And now I call this water. Simply copy this variable. From here, I get only for this water, which is the greater than, suppose, greater than uh, 90. Okay. 90 frequency. All of those greater than 90 frequency, I consider as a permanent water. Suppose because in this time you can see it's a river water. River water we can get almost uh, up to 99% or 100%, 99%. So river water is a permanent water. So in this time we consider all of those water frequency greater than 90 as a permanent water. 
okay so now i want to display this permanent water body present so for doing this just simply take a variable i want to show the layer suppose take a variable map dot add layer and so this uh, yeah so why we have uh, 90 instead in this, of uh, yeah. 100 in this time here you can see when i click on here it's a river okay so click the river i can get almost this permanent water is the 90 99 99 okay suppose okay. i click on here i can get this uh, pixel value for that uh, 100 also click on here mm. i can get this 100 also you can click on here i can get this uh, 100 so basically it, when i can get the 100 it's identify about the permanent water or 99 percent it's identify about the permanent water because this frequency is up to 100 percent you can see 100 percent frequency i can get for the 99 so it's a permanent water so in this time from this study area i want to find out some permanent water body when I put here the 90, then this variable is stored, all of those get at the 90. All of those uh, frequency get at the 90 and is stored in this variable permanent. So in this time, when I put here the 90, then I can get the permanent water. And less than 90, it's not a permanent water. Suppose uh, which frequency 74 or 10 or 20, it's not a permanent water. So it's a um, um, it's a water when the rainy season will be calm, then this water. But when I get the get at the ninety percent, then it show the permanent water. Or if you want, you can also put at the eighty percent, no problem. Suppose get at then eighty percent, all of those frequency we consider as a um, permanent water body. And less than eighty percent, less than eighty percent, all of this water is not a permanent water. Okay, it's a suppose rainy so season. This this yeah. this is depend is depends to to one who uh, design the the code or yeah. because when you say I can even me I can say okay it's a seventy yeah so someone someone can say no it's not seventy it's not it should be uh, sixty so there is a I don't know if uh, there is it, it's not a fix it's not a fix okay you can simply check your value you can see it's a permanent water body. So here we can get the 100%. So in this time, we are just considered a thresholding value. Suppose all of those 80% uh, frequency we consider as a permanent water body. And then but I show the this result. Is, yeah, yeah. I'm, I understand. But the problem is when you see here, you, you see the occurrence is uh, 99. 99, like uh, this is the permanent. I don't know. I'm, I don't understand exactly the per when you say the permanent what a border it means what's exactly because when you click here you, you can see the 99 the 99 like uh, the high level so the permanence it means what because when you click we don't see this 80 80 80 80 we see you the can 90, see we can get the, the less than 90 we can also get from where you can see 50 percent okay 50 okay yeah. 50 so in this time this 50 is not the permanent water body Suppose uh, for the rainy well, season, you know, it will be stored. You know that's the permanent body. How to how we can know that this is the permanent body? Because we have a lot of a lot of uh, occurrence, number of occurrence. So how we can know that this is a permanent body exactly? Okay, so for that you can see here this map data again. So basically, uh, we can get the frequency with uh, with which water was present. Okay. When I yeah. can get the high frequency, then it means that it's a permanent water. Okay. So when I can get the low frequency, it means that it's not a permanent water. And in this yeah. time, this thresholding value is different. Suppose some region for the river. So river, yeah. uh, some river is all time water. Okay. So there is, uh, we can all time, we can get the hundred percent frequency. Okay, some place, suppose in this time I can find out uh, this type of place you can see. In the lake, in this lake, this lake is uh, is not same all time. At the same water we cannot find out. Here you can see, in the lake, we can get the some place is for the 100% or 90% and some place we can get the 74%. Suppose you can see, when I click on here, I can get the 98%. But when I click on here, you can see, 
it show the result for the 49 percent okay so in this mm. time this place suppose this place this place all time water it's a permanent water but this place mm -hmm. uh, okay. this side of the place is not a permanent water suppose when i click on okay. here you can see it show about the low value 46 but when i click on this here it show the value for that 99 percent yeah. so in this time okay. this value this uh this region all time water it's a permanent water body but this region is not the permanent sometime water is available but not all time okay, okay. you can so that's why this occurrence is that low you can get the 49 percent so in this time i take only for the permanent water body and remove all of those uh all of those uh non-permanent uh water body so for that in this time i consider all of those 80 percent occurrence all of those or get at them get at them 80 percent occurrence i uh, consider as a permanent water body then this type of water body is not calculated so that's why i call the water from here i can take the greater than 80 percent okay. occurrence so it means uh all in the permanence body when we have this uh 80 yeah uh, 80 yeah uh, it means uh, it's a, a permanence border so yes. maybe we can change to say if we have a 70. no problem then we are also get okay. the all of those suppose all of those greater than 70 occurrence we consider as a permanent water okay so, but it also better to use the 80 or 90 it's better to use because okay. you can see all time we can get the permanent what is a 96 mainly up to okay. 90 we can get the all time up to 90 you can see 99 some dog giggle the hundred percent we can see 97 so all time so if we say yeah. if we say 80 it means uh, from 80 to 100 it's, it's a permanent uh, it's water really permanent. okay yes 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 so as it means uh, for in this case it will start from 80 to yeah. to 100 to 100 yes 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 i'm gonna okay. 80 greater than 81 82 84 up to 100. Mm. so okay. when you have the var when you declare the var the variable permanent yeah uh, so now i'm gonna show it suppose copy the permanent those? and display this result only for the permanent water body now you can see what happened you can mm -hmm. get so in this time uh, i just simply put here the permanent and then use a function cell max okay and then basically in this time i use the self marks in this time it automatically marks this area automatically marks so that's why the self marks and then um, i want to add the color suppose plated so put at the blue okay i show the primary water body as a blue color and now click the in this time you can see what happened so i can see it all below the another layer and in this layer, we are also get the permanent water body, which is greater than 80 occurrence. It loaded. Okay, it loaded. Yeah. Suppose in this time I simply zoom this area again. Suppose I zoom this leg. In this time we can see in this leg. Uh, in this time we can see it's a it's a permanent water. Okay, so this water is not changed, and you can see it's a full water. Okay, in this time it's the it's uh, and in this time we can see it's a permanent water. So just I open it. So it's a it's a permanent water. Okay, so this region all time. This region have all time water, but some region uh, can be uh, dry or some time. Okay, mm -hmm. you can see it is a full water. From the full water, I just uh, take greater than eighty percent occurrence. So I can get this type of region. Uh, it is eighty percent occurrence. Greater than eighty percent. Oh. So this type of region all time water, and it considered as a uh, permanent water. You can see this region is uh, it is a permanent water. Okay, mm -hmm. but when you can see, I just open the all of water you can see it show this type of region okay it's not the um it's it's a less than 80 percent less than 80 percent yes, occurrence yeah. this type of region so it's not the permanent yeah. we can get the permanent is the greater than 80 percent so you can find out the permanent water body because it also need for that uh, the flooding 
suppose when there is a permanent water body is okay but when the water is the overflow okay suppose when the water is the overflow then occur the flood so permanent water body there is no problem but when the water is the overflow then it will be occur the flood okay so this is the further we also need the permanent water body and now you can see this is the map for your study area it show the permanent water body it's a permanent water body it's a permanent water body it's a permanent water body mainly it's a river so it's a permanent water body we can create the permanent water body map okay and this layer mainly it's create for the all of water okay which is not okay. permanent all of this water considered in this time so in this time it is also better for you. we can we can uh, rename the layer instead to yeah. say layer yeah. three yeah. layer yeah. suppose i re rename it it also better then we can easily get the suppose uh, first of all we add the total three layer so first of all you can see map dot add layer yeah map dot add layer so i want to put this layer name suppose uh, is a roi reason of interest and then i put this uh, layer name suppose uh, water okay. and put this layer name permanent water so just put here that um, then we can easily get this uh, things so permanent water so now click there in this time you can see it added the layer name and from this layer we can easily you can see permanent water water roi so roi mainly your boundary so when you uh, run after click the, the trigger yeah, click, on, click, after click on here or uh, shortcut okay. key control and enter on your keyboard control and enter okay. then it will be done you can see okay. it will create for your study area we can get the um, permanent water permanent. Yeah. we can get the all of water we can get the study area okay so now, okay, I think we also need the some other time also to, because it is a very long code. So I want to write the one by one for your understanding. So that's why uh, we also- we Just a copy, fix. you can maybe copy and paste and then you will explain line by line like this, because it's better to uh, to understand line by line. If you, yeah. when you want to change, you will understand yes. what's the line, yeah. Yes. Okay, so, okay. So in this time, we can get this water, look like this water we can get, okay. After that, we create from distance from water. Okay. Suppose in this time, what is the distance from water? It's very important for the flood. Uh, suppose I need to create distance from water map. In this time, here you can see it's a water. It's a water. I want to measure yeah. distance from water. Uh, what's uh, suppose this region is near to the water. You can see suppose this region is near to the water. Mm -hmm. This region, suppose this region, you can see it's the far from water. Okay. And now this region is high susceptibility for flood because it's near to the water. Okay. And this region, suppose this region is far from water. So that's why this region is low susceptibility for flood. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this time, we calculate distance from water. And then we also calculate distance from the road. So for that, we also need to import the road shape file also we need. So in this time, we all, we already make the water. So this is our permanent water. And we calculate distance from water area. Suppose this region is more, um, this region is more susceptibility or high susceptibility because it's near to the water. And this region, suppose it's the far from the water. So it's the low susceptibility for the flood. So now how I can do that? So just I simply write the code distance from water. Okay, so for distance from water, uh, first of all, I take a variable, simply call the uh, distance. And I want to generate this distance from water from my permanent water. Okay, I want to consider the permanent water body. So simply copy the permanent and paste here. Okay. And then further, I just simply use a function. You can simply start the function also in here, in the docs tab. I use the function fast distance transform. Get this function you can see. So basically, we are use this function fast distance transform. This function we are use to create the distance from road, distance from river, distance from water. So this type of things when I create, 
then we are using uh, this first distance transform this function you can see it return the distance as determined by the specific distance metric to the nearest non zero value pixel in the input the output contains the values for all pixel within the given neighborhood size regardless of the input max so in this time i want to use it first distance transform this function and then calculate so just simply copy this things simply copy copy this function and then paste here okay first distance transform i want to use this function create the distance from water map okay so now i simply put this distance uh, first distance transform and now i want to divide with this uh, scale so in this time here you can see i want to check about the what is the scale about this data set click on here here are 30 meter okay so this resolution is a 30 meter so just i simply divide with 30 meter so put here the divide function divide with uh, 30 meter and further clip with my uh, study area so just use at the clip function with my study area and mainly ry okay ry is your study area so after doing this thing uh, i this, need, uh, yeah this this uh, this tetsi tetsi device by tetsi it's tetsi a scale for what I don't scale pixel area pixel area mainly this data set you can see this data set resolution or pixel area is the 30 meter okay so this pixel area is 30 meter we can ah, okay, get okay okay so it's the resolution okay so i simply put here okay. the divide divide with 30 meter and clip with study area okay so now i want to show this result okay. please so, could you could you just add uh, add a comment in this uh, in this uh, this okay. line to say okay, so, uh, okay i write in here uh, yeah. it's a scale uh, no, in the same in the i don't know if it is possible in the end of line it's better in the end of line okay. yeah 30 meter 30 meter is a scale of this data set mainly it's the global surface water mm -hmm. okay this data set we put in here okay so now add the layer about that so just i simply use here map dot add layer and call this distance copy and uh, paste here so now click the line this time you can see it added the another layer about the distance and there we also put the name about this layer the distance it generate okay in this time it create this type of color because i did not add any color about this distance so for doing this i simply click on here and then i simply click on the suppose 98 percent stress so now i can get the 0 0.2 meter to 10 meter okay this range so now apply it you can see what happened in this time i can get this type of result okay so in this time if you can also add the color plated so click on the plated option so click on here i want to show the color near to the river as a uh, you can put any color suppose i put here the suppose blue color okay then put here the plus sign suppose then i put here the this type of sign color or any color you need to use then put here that uh, suppose uh, green color okay then suppose put here that um, yellow color okay and then uh third i need red color so red color identify about the far distance okay or you can put any color no problem and then apply so in this time you can see what i can get from here i can get this type of map and basically it's the distance from so water map. when you say when you say the distance it means uh, uh the distance uh, distance from, from water, water from uh, the deep from dipping 
the what distance from dipping or distance from uh, the, the 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 I mean from the one location to another location. No, in this time here you can see it's a water, okay, and this is the yeah. close to the water, okay, near to the water. It's the low distance, okay. Distance. Yeah, this distance. Yeah, the yeah. problem of distance. I want to just to understand the distance. Uh, it's not. We are not. Uh, it means it's. Um, it's not the deep. It's just the distance. Yeah, distance, I mean. distance. Yeah, how because how far I'm distance, yeah. distance? Yeah, distance and the deep. Uh, if for this one is just the distance from uh, the water and uh, the. I mean the, the, the near the near area near 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 wood near, near area. area near area. Yes. Okay. Yes. In this time, this red color identify about that far area. Okay. And then you can see the blue color identify about the close to the area, close to the river or close to the water. Then cyan color, then yellow color. Okay. So in this time, you can see this type of region, which are near to the water, it is the high susceptibility of the flood. Okay. And far mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the water, suppose this type of uh, red color, it's the low susceptibility of the, of the flood because it's the, it's the far from the water. So I simply import that. And after doing this thing, I simply copy after importing and then paste here. Paste here. And further, I put the layer name. Suppose uh, distance from water. Okay, now click the run. Then this time it create the another layer. You can see distance from water. And we also need to create the map for distance from road. Okay, so for that we need to create the road shape file, and then we are also create the distance from road. About that, we need to create the drainage density of your river. So a lot of things we need to complete one by one. Okay, so you can get create this type of map for your study area. Okay, so in this time, after getting this type of map, distance from water, we have to generate the another map, only the distance without permanent water. Okay, only the distance without permanent water, we have to create it. Okay, so I will write this thing, suppose only the distance. without permanent water for doing these things only that is with the permanent water so for doing this thing we are just simply take a variable suppose only distance and then i call this distance And then I simply use the function update max with distance and not equal to zero. Okay, not equal to zero. I put in here, and I also consider the another things mainly. I also end. SRTM basically it's a dem data with max. Okay, so now I show this result first, then try to explain about that. Suppose just take a variable map dot add layer. Call this only distance without over permanent water, and now click the run. I have the wrong spelling in here. Simply copy and use the check.
to get loaded. So now further click on here and then custom is state 98 percent then i so in this time we can get it uh the distance without permanent water and i want to add the color suppose same current we use in here such so as click on the plate and plate the color suppose for the blue color for the near to the distance blue color and then uh, put here that mainly suppose uh, this type of sign color and then suppose put here that um, suppose green color let's put here that yellow color and high distance show the red color okay then apply and now to be added in here you can see. okay added that these things and for the import okay and then simply copy this variable name and add after this object name and put this layer name mainly uh, i put this layer name suppose distance from hence Out. Permanent water. Now click the run. It gets another layer okay in this time after completing these things we talk about that your um data mainly it's called the dem data okay so dem data in this time we create the elevation using this dem data so i already import the dem data srtm this dem data so for doing this thing just take a variable mm, suppose i put this variable name is the elevation elevation and call this srtm it's clip with my study area and the it show the result uh, and the ROI okay, so now I show the dem or elevation data map dot add layer and call this elevation and click run so now it added the elevation can see at the another layer for elevation or dim data 